what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. What's up guys? Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank God it is summer because I am so ready for sunshine. And I'm also ready to have some fun adventures and get some art done and enjoy life with Rose, of course. And I wanted to talk about my summer bucket list. Every summer it seems like I have a million things that I want to do and I never actually write them down. And so I started writing some things down that I'd like to do this summer, such as I want to go hiking, I want to do some stargazing, I really hope to visit my grandparents, and I want to finish this unicorn painting. But today's first item on the summer bucket list is reading. I really want to read six books this summer, and so I'm going to tell you about those six books. All of them are classics. I've been really trying to work through some of the classics that I'm embarrassed about not having read yet, so there's that. And I wanted to say that I think reading is so important, obviously everyone says that, but it really is a huge part of my creative inspiration. I had to go grab Rose because she was getting a little fussy. The first book I'm going to be reading is The Diary of Anais Nin, Volume 1. I believe there's seven volumes, and um, Anais Nin is a essayist, a short story writer, and she has journals that span about 60 years. And she wrote, um, this volume is from 1931 to 1934, and it takes place in Paris, and she's hanging out with Henry Miller, and she's just living the Parisian writer, artist lifestyle. She's also well known for being one of the few female erotica writers. She definitely writes so much about the passion of life, art, and erotica in her journals. And I think it'll be a really inspiring read for me. Uh, so since we're re reading Anais Nin, why not read Henry Miller? Because he was working on Tropic of Cancer while he was hanging out with her in Paris. This is a combo of a memoir and a fiction. I would say that unlike Anais and Henry Miller is the realist. He's writes a lot, he writes a lot about homelessness and drunkenness and a lot of sexual encounters. And Tropic of Cancer is actually responsible for the freedom of speech we have in literature. Okay, and next book up is Gone with the Wind. I'm actually super embarrassed that I've never read this. Um, Maybe a lot of people of our generation have it. I don't know. I've never even seen the movie because it's been on my reading list for so long. But Gone with the Wind is by Margaret Mitchell and it takes place in the South. It's about a young girl named Scarlett O'Hare. It's a coming of age story. Um, she's the daughter of a plantation owner who, um, after the Civil American Civil War and the Reconstruction era, She's trying to pull herself out of poverty. This is a great historical piece of fiction. It's also the second most popular book amongst American readers next to the Bible. Okay, next up we have The Great Gatsby, which again, super embarrassed, never, I've never read it. I, for some reason, didn't have to read it in high school. I don't know why. Um, but I've never seen the movies, either the old one or the new one, because I've been holding out to read this. It's been on my reading list for a million years. So this book takes place in a fictional town in Long Island during the 20s, and it's about a mis young, mysterious millionaire named Jay Gatsby, who has a very quixotic, quixotic sense of life. Speaking of quixotic, why not read Don Quixote? This is about a Hidalgo who reads way too many chivalric romances. He chooses to live out a life of antiquated knighthood. Last, but certainly not least, we have Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. This book is very interesting because, um, well first I'll say, it's about this woman who ha is having a party, she's going around London in preparation for the party, and she's going back in time and memory of thinking about her childhood in the countryside and how she could have chosen between two different men, but that she actually had a preference for this woman named Sally Seton, who was her true love. And so 
I just find that fascinating considering the time period um, it takes place after the First World War. Um, but this book was actually published in, published in 1925, I believe. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed your first day of summer. I'm sure you're all stoked, as stoked as I am. Let me know what's on your summer bucket list and let me know if you're reading any books and what they are and what your plans are. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. I will be putting quotes down from these books or discussing the books. And I would love it if you wanted to read along with me and we could continue with conceptual, intellectual discussions. And all of these books you can purchase on Amazon. I'll put the links in the description below. I'm so looking forward to all the adventures this summer and taking you guys along on them. Again, thank you for tuning in and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to continue following me on mom life, art life, and all the other adventures. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.